So I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to today's SRT Interop Plugfest webinar. Um, my name is Marcus Scholler. I'm the moderator today, and uh, I'll be being joined by an international panel uh, of speakers, including Pablo Hesse, uh, Jesus Oliva, Callum Plunkett, and Eustace Rogman. Each one of them will join uh, and introduce themselves as uh, we go through the presentation. Um, just a couple of quick logistics. Uh, we will be sharing a couple of links. Um, please check in the chat uh, from time to time. We will be including them there. Uh, these links can be useful for uh, the content that you'll be seeing today in today's webinar. Um, we won't be doing questions. Uh, obviously, this today's webinar is part of the PlugFest, and the PlugFest event itself takes place over a number of days. So you'll have plenty of time to interact with the members of the PlugFest, to ask your questions, uh, get answers, et cetera. So today, we'll really be focusing on, on the content to make sure everybody's up to speed uh, with what's going on. We have obviously a lot of news, and we're very, very excited uh, about this session. It's been a while, actually, since we've done a PlugFest. So uh, before we jump in, uh, let me just uh, get going uh, with an overview of what we'll be talking about today. So we'll start by giving you an update about the latest developments in the SRT Alliance. Um, then we'll talk about the evolution of the SRT open source protocol and talk uh, about the latest developments in SRT. And we're extremely excited to have our special guest, uh, Cal Plunkett from YouTube here to talk about uh, the process that you guys will be working with today uh, and throughout the plug fest to uh, test the interop between your streams and YouTube ingest. Uh, and ultimately, last but not least, we'll go over the plug fest logistics and the process through which we're going to run all these tests uh, to ultimately create a successful plug fest. So that's a quick intro. I think we can get started right now. So with that, I'd like to welcome our first speaker to the webinar, uh, Pablo Hesse, the director of the SRT Alliance, who's joining us in uh, France. Um, and welcome, Pablo. Maybe you could do a quick introduction and uh, we'll get going with your section. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marcus, for, for the introduction. I'm Pablo Jesse, and I'm the director of the SRT Alliance. And you can count on me for any marketing initiative that you want to run together or for any strategic partnership idea that you may have. Uh, at the end of the, my presentation, I will leave you my details so you can grab them and reach me out at any time. So uh, today's Blackfest is very special. It's a special one, right? Uh, we turned 60 years old, and we recently surpassed the 600 members bar. Those two facts say a lot about the SRT implementation in the industry. And not only that, but we're welcoming YouTube into the SRT Alliance, and they're also co-starring the event today. They are opening up their platform so you guys can test it, and I guess that's something that you guys are waiting for. So thank you so much, uh, Callum and team, for, for all the logistics. It's a pleasure to have you guys here today. But let me go back for a moment now to the to the traction, to the 600 members bar, and uh, how, how we got there, right? I mean, I think that SRT and the SRT Alliance have exceeded our expectations, honestly, when we open source the protocol back in 2017. It was hard to imagine that we could get where we are today. And it's, it's, it's great to see all that, and it's great to see the adoption. But most important that the traction itself, shown in the two graphic, is uh, what we perceive in NEV this year. And uh, where uh, we heard that most of you use SRT as the core protocol for your production workflows. And that's amazing. And that's thanks to all of your work and uh, you, for you guys to embrace the protocol and support it. So kudos to all you for all this. It's, it's also your success. So, uh, and if we move into the next slide, I will only say that if you're not a still a member and you want to be one, be part of this amazing community, you only need to go to the srtalliance.org website, click on become a member and submit your application. It's pretty quick and there are no uh, money obligations at all. So it's something that you, you can do right now so you can be, again, part of this community and show how you have implemented the protocol in your product. Um, the last piece I would say, you know, that I would like to, to talk about is what is the meaning of the SRT already and the SRT plug batches? This is a question that we get a lot, to be honest. So it's, it is worth to, to explain it a little bit. 
Um, the SRT already is, is a question that you, you get when you fill in the application. So you get two questions. One, if your product is SRT ready, that you can mark yes or no. And then which product is SRT ready? So once you have completed that and our team has processed all the information and verifies that is accurate, then we grant that the batch and it can be shown in the in the video in the gift that is shown in the slide right so if you go to the member side of the srt alliance.org website you will see your batch together your name and listing uh, besides the srt plug is complementary to the srt ready so the srt plug is only granted during these events the plug fest and is uh you know it is granted after passing interoperability tests so after all the work that you guys are gonna do all this week and you pass it successfully, you will be granted with your SRT plug uh, batch. And it is great to communicate that to, to members and customers so you verify that your, your product is not only ready, but it has run interoperability tests. That I think is, is great to communicate to those members and customers, uh, as I said. So as a summary, it's a SRT ready when you're applying to the SRT Alliance or after that, you know, you can reach us out to the to, to our email and we can update the status for you and the SRT plug only during the plug phase and is uh, after you have passed successfully interoperability events. And um, that's that's pretty much from me. Uh, as I said at the beginning, you, you guys have my contact details here and you can reach me out for marketing initiatives and strategic partnership ideas. I will love to, to hear those. And now, you know, I, I leave you with, with Marcus and Jesus, Jesus, our Chief Innovation Officer, to communicate to you the latest about the, the SRT, uh, uh, SRT project. So thank you so much, Sue. Okay, thank you very much, Pablo, and uh, welcome to Jesus. We're gonna move on to the next part of the uh, the program today, which is uh, getting an update from you, who uh, are a very important person in terms of the development of the SRT protocol. So maybe you can introduce yourself. It's the first time that you're participating in a plug fest with uh, with us today. So welcome, and uh, yep. thank you for being here. Yep. First of all, thank you very much for for the introduction. Thank you very much, Pablo. I thank you very much for everyone for joining the plug fest. It's going to be a very very interesting event. My name is Jesus Oliva. I am the Chief Innovation Officer here at High Vision. And one of the things that I am doing here is leading the great team, which is behind the development and definition of the SRT specification and, and, and library. And my mission here is just to explain with it, to explain, to share with you uh, the latest about the releases that we have been working on, the latest about the, all the work that we are doing around SRT. Okay, so we can move forward to the next slide. Uh, it is uh, six years and one month ago, we did the first commit on the SRT open source project, okay? A uh, lot of things have changed during all this time. Uh, even though the vision of the project was quite ambitious from the beginning, we didn't imagine uh, at what point we were going to arrive. Uh, uh, the thing here is that even though many things have changed, the, the pillars of SRT still keep the same. There are five main things that we would like to keep that we are pushing forward to improve uh, with any new release that we are doing. And those five pillars are first, low latency is the critical thing behind SRT. We would like to, to come with a streaming protocol that is uh, focused on providing the lowest latency. It should provide also, or it should be a focus on higher or the highest throughput, okay? Because one of the targets of the protocol is to provide video pristine quality, and then the need of uh, uh, higher throughput uh, um, support. It should be content agnostic. We never attach SRT to any codec, to any the maxer, to any maxer. It should be compatible with all the codecs, maxers, and, and, and type of payloads of the industry. Uh, security is one of the key points of SRT, and not just because we want to protect the content uh, so it can be access, just accessible just to the people that has the rights, also because we want to avoid attackers to tamper, to modify the content is very important for us, security. And last but not least, uh, the idea of being compatible with the networks that we are, we are working on every single day. We need to be able to come with a protocol that is able to work with different firewall configurations, okay? 
So those are the five pillars from the very beginning. I would like to share with you some numbers that are somehow talking about the, the health of the open source project, okay? Just to provide some KPIs uh, during the last year, this is from 2020, May 2022 to May 2023. Uh, we have been working, we have merged 193 pull requests. These are changes that we have put into the project to fix problems, to in, uh, in, uh, include improvements, to include new features uh, for, the full, for, the, for all the community. We have resolved more than 200 issues, GitHub issues I am talking about, uh, questions, feature, bugs, whatever is related with requests from customers. Uh, we have fixed more than 200. Uh, there are 27 contributors in the last year. This is people that was pushing, pushing code to the project to make it better is is very healthy the idea of having so many people contributing to the code that's very nice and we release uh, six releases this is a combination of official releases or stable releases plus the release candidates that we are making public so people can start testing and providing feedback uh, to the rest of the community okay so yes some numbers regarding the the the, the open source project i would like also to share with you some some uh, uh, or some information regarding uh, the latest features or the latest versions that we uh, release in, in, the con in, in the context of SRT and what were the improvements in which we, we were working on. Uh, starting with SRT 1.4.4, we came with a new and efficient retransmission algorithm that was quite important and I think it was a very, uh, it was a game changer for the way SRT was behaving. With this new retransmission algorithm, we reduce the bandwidth used for retransmissions up, up to 70%, which is a huge improvement. With 1.4.4, we also work it on something that was fully focused on increase the reliability of the protocol, which is uh, the clock drift compensation and the RTT estimation, two, key, two points which are key for the uh, protocol stability. I'm going to continue with SRT 1.5.0. There was uh, a very important chain that came with that version, which is the connection bonding. Even though it was experimental before, we put that in a stable mode in 1.5.0 with two different connection bonding modes uh, for, for the broadcast mode and main backup mode. Both of them thinking on, on, on better protecting your streams or better protecting the transporting the transport of your streams. We also work it on a new uh, and an optimized receiver buffer algorithm that was thought for two main purposes. One was to, to refactor the code and make the connection, the connection bonding more stable. The other one was to optimize the memory and the latency of the protocol. That was also two key factors for us. We need to be compatible with uh, lower end devices, devices that doesn't have too much uh, resources, and memory is one of the limited resources that we plan, we, we are always planning to optimize. Last but not least, uh, the third and very important improvement that came with 1.5.0 was the live congestion uh, algorithm, uh, which was redesigned to make SRT more uh, interoperable, let's say, with situation in which the, vari the, the bit rate is, is highly variable, both, both because the, encode, the encoder is producing a highly variable bit rate or because the network conditions uh, are changing a lot. And then we need a congestion algorithm that is able to adapt itself to the, to the variable conditions. And I think with this version, with this new algorithm, we got a behavior that is quite, quite smart and that is satisfying most of the uh, situation that we are experiencing. Uh, the latest version in which we have the latest versions in which we have been working on are 1.5.1 and 1.5.2 in which the main improvement is the AEAD uh, feature which is focused on security uh, and with this feature what we are doing is protecting the SRT headers previously we were using encryption to protect the payload of the content uh, of the packets with this version, with this new feature, what we are doing is ensuring the integrity of the headers of SRT. So no man in the middle could modify the stream and try to attack your services. This is the summary of the of, of the features that I was I was want I, I wanted to talk about. 
uh, just to finish, one of the things that I would like to share with the full community is that it is very important that you uh, keep updated, keep up, uh, updated the version of SRT that you are using. It's important that you uh, uh, are subscribed to the latest version, that you keep updating the code that we are releasing, just to keep interoperability, to keep the new features, to keep all the new things that we are releasing as part of the SRT development process. Um, and that's all. I think we have we have both and Pablo both Pablo and myself need to go. So and before before leaving, we would like to say thank you to everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. Uh, I hope you enjoy the experience. Uh, I, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you guys both. I understand that you have to leave, and but thank you for being here. Thank you for the updates on the SRT Alliance and the development, Pablo and uh, Jesus. Uh, have a good day. We'll move on to the next part, uh, which is probably what a lot of you are here to see about in more detail, which uh, is uh, our very special guest, Callum Plunkett from YouTube, uh, who is going to be uh, talking about uh, the process through which we're going to be working together during this plug fest in order to run tests to verify the, the stream compatibility with YouTube live uh, ingest. So, Callum, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to let you take over screen sharing now. Uh, since you'll not only be doing presentation, but also a live demo, which is really, really cool. Uh, so let, I'll pass it to you, let you take over and just uh, welcome. Please introduce yourself to everybody when you're ready. Thank you very much, Marcus. And hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Callum Plunkett. Uh, I'm a live solutions consultant here at YouTube. And uh, as Marcus said today, we're going to be talking to you about YouTube Live and how we're introducing SRT ingests uh, and how I'd love to be able to communicate with all of you uh, in the webinar today and anyone that watches this after the fact uh, so that we can test, make sure that your encoding device or software encoder, whatever it's going to be, works seamlessly with YouTube Live. But let's uh, share my screen into the call and let's talk about it. So, and let's just pop that full screen. There we go. So uh, the goals for today and my goals are to guide you through a program that we have here at YouTube, which is called the Live Verified Encoder Program, and then also explain the requirements for successfully sending SRT to a YouTube Live ingest. Um, in that, I'm going to show you the experience of what the UI looks like in the YouTube platform. Uh, we're going to guide you through the process of creating a channel uh, so that we can get you a test channel set up so that you can share that with us and we can enable that for SRT. Um, but let's first talk about the live verified encoder program because that's something I think uh, I want to drive awareness to today. Um, this is my very long list of slide of agenda items. So as I said, uh, what's the live verified encoder program? Then we'll go through creating a channel, enabling it for live, requesting access, important key steps for you today. Then the SRT encoder expectations, which I'm sure a lot of you will be keen to see. Uh, then how to create the SRT in just uh, the testing parameters uh, and uh, SRT syntax, and then we'll go into a demo. Um, overall, hopefully I won't take more than 20 minutes of your time to get through this, but here we go. So let's talk about the live verified encoder program. Uh, now this program is built to ensure that your hardware works with YouTube perfectly, that it's a seamless experience for the people at home that buy your equipment or use your equipment on live broadcasts. Um, and when we go through the testing with you, and provided that the testing requirements are met, we would list your encoding device on our help center article, which is where we you know, push creators to look for new tooling, or if they come to us and they ask during a session where we've got one-on-ones with creators, with broadcasters, whoever we work with, we can always reference products that are listed on that help center article so that people are getting the best information for the use case that they want to use. Um, part of this is obviously extending this to SRT verification. Um, and in order to, for us to list it as SRT compatible, you first need to be listed uh, as YouTube Live Verified. Uh, it's a two-part process. Uh, the first part, we'll go through a bunch of testing, make sure your encoder works seamlessly with YouTube, and then we'll follow on and do SRT testing. Um, one part that I want to talk about here uh, is these th three bullet points as to why you should be part of the program. And I think number one, uh, and this, I say number one, it's actually number three here, uh, exclusive access and being a verified partner gets you access to NDA, protect NDA protected features, and you can be early adopters of new features as well that we're coming out with. An addition to this is that you get 
the opportunity to create a constant dialogue with someone who works at YouTube so that we can work together so that when we're bringing out something new, we can test it with you. If you're bringing out something, you can give us the heads up and that lets us work seamlessly together. Um, obviously, two other points to cover, rather important. Obviously, user quality. We obviously recommend devices to creators that are proven to give them a high quality streaming experience. Um, and then customer visibility. That's another reason to be verified. Uh, it's that you know creators want to know what setup works best when streaming to YouTube. And we're often in conversations where creators and broadcasters are looking for a new workflow uh, and being verified encourages creators to choose that device or other devices with similar workflows. So uh, let's continue on. Uh, that is the Live Verified Encoder program. If you'd like to be part of that, there's gonna be a form that's gonna be shared into the chat at some point during this. I'm sure it's already been shared out uh, and will be shared out after this event today, um, but it's one of the fields. So if you'd like to be part of the Verified Encoder program, please click yes, and then we'll get in touch with you about that. So let's get into how to test your device for SRT. So first, obviously, the first thing you need to do is create a channel. Um, if you've not done this already, what we're looking for you to do is create a dedicated test channel for your encoding company, for your production uh, vendor, whoever you're working for. Create a dedicated test channel so that we can enable it for SRT. Um, as you can see here, there's a few steps to follow, but it's fairly straightforward to set up a YouTube channel. I'm sure a lot of you have already been through the process. If you haven't, I'd recommend checking the YouTube Help Center articles because there are a number of articles that will list you to how to create a YouTube channel, how to enable it for live streaming, et cetera. But uh, if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to take a screenshot of this image here. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. As I say, you know, sign in uh, to your computer, uh, you'll need to create a YouTube channel. So obviously, yes, sorry. Uh, you need to sign into your Google account, then go to YouTube, then create a channel. Uh, click on your profile picture if you haven't got one already and click the create a channel button, then you'll be asked some details and then you can verify it. When you go through that process, you'll then want to enable live streaming. So go to youtube.com uh, forward slash live streaming, or you can just go to YouTube. And then in the top right corner, you've got the camera icon with the plus in the middle. If you click on that, it's where you upload videos. You can also then click go live. When you click that, if you haven't followed uh, the prompt to verify your channel, uh, it's gonna come up and say, verify your channel so that you can go live. This will require you to have a phone number. And then once you've gone through that process, a 24 hour countdown will start on your channel. You'll be able to see it pop up for you and it will tell you exactly how long till you go live. Once you've done that, then you'll want to send us your channel ID. This is something that you'll need to have when you send through the form so that we know which channel to enable for SRT. Um, to find your channel ID, it's a fairly straightforward process. Go to YouTube, click a profile picture in the top right corner, click on the settings, then advanced settings and then find your channel ID and then fill in the form. Lovely, so that's set out of the way. Once you've got that done and you've sent through all that information, we will be in touch. Um, but let's talk about the encoder SRT requirements. So encoders uh, should be able to populate stuff like IP address, host name, port number, stream ID, um, encryption, uh, enable encryption and enter a passphrase, the latency variable, you need to be able to toggle that your encoder is the caller. We as YouTube will not be calling out to pull in a feed. Um, and then bitrate and resolution. In addition to these requirements, you also need to uh, have an encoder that immediately reconnects if the server disconnects, much like when you're using OBS with a, just a simple RTMP stream. Uh, you want to be able to set the reconnect window to one second. You need to be able to do a similar thing with SRT. And then obviously with that resolve DNS address issues for each reconnection that you might incur. Um, outside of that, I want to list some ideal scenarios, which I'd like to surface to you um, because I feel like with SRT, the industry's grown to be accustomed to getting a number of variables. And I'm sure you've probably seen with high vision products in particular, they're very good at displaying statistics and ongoing metrics of what is happening whilst your SRT feed is going in, coming out of your gateway or you're using your Rakito, whatever products you're using. Um, so the information we think that ideally should be within your encoding device is round trip time, packet loss rate, uptime, connection reattempt, and outbound bit rate. These aren't a requirement for your encoder to be listed by us or to go through testing, but we feel that we would ask that this is the information that with SRT, people have grown to 
got a, they're accustomed to having that information and it's not something we as a platform are able to surface um, to the people using the YouTube live control room. So if you're able to put that within your encoder, that'd be fantastic. So let's talk about what it looks like in the live control room. This is probably the slide you've all been waiting for. Um, as you know it here and now, that is where you collect your stream key. We've kept the UI very much the same as I'm sure you probably would have guessed. So it looks like this. Um, so as you can see here, I'm gonna break it down further. So what you've got uh, on this slide here is you have your dropdown at the top where you can select your stream key. You can obviously create multiple SRT ingests if you would like for different events. You then have your stream key, which you're gonna need to be able to create your stream ID. You need your passphrase, and then you have your primary and backup server URLs. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, it's also got stream latency. It works with normal, ultra low, and low latency. So you're good to go there. So let's talk about creating that ingest. As you can see, the GIF on the right-hand side is going to be playing out and showing you exactly the process. But as you know, the YouTube UI, uh, we've kept it very much the same. It's the same YouTube you know and love. So you click the drop down, you click create a stream key, you then select that it's an SRT ingest you want to create, and then hit create. Uh, obviously, give it a name as well. Um, and one thing I really want to emphasize on this slide is I realize I've been through the majority of the top part of it already is the bottom section, which is where you can see the stream ID uh, prefix and suffixes that re are required when creating the stream ID. So obviously you can see here, hashtag exclamation point, colon, colon, U equals would be your prefix. And then uh, everything past uh, the colon and the copy zero is your suffix. Um, it'd be great, I think, if you are designing this implementation for creators and such that you uh, because if I just go back one slide, uh, your stream key will not include that information, the prefix and the suffix. So if you can include that as part of your encoder setup, then that'd be better so that you can just essentially copy and paste the stream key uh, into the box and you've already added that either side so people don't need to worry. Um, but if you do want to uh, just leave it so that the users can type this in, that's no problem at all, but that is the requirements as you can see down the bottom for your primary and your secondary encoder. Um, and then let's talk about testing. Uh, this is the final thing before we get on to a short live demo to talk uh, to talk about. So let's talk about testing. So um, let me just move uh, this Zoom window out of the way. So uh, once we have been in touch with you as Live Solutions, once we've enabled your channel for SRT, we're going to reach out to you to coordinate a testing window so that we can all be aware of when you're testing and uh, we can check and see how it's going and obviously provide feedback in that open line of communication I mentioned earlier. So the testing requirements as followed is if you are, uh, if you're here with me on number, bullet point number one, so start a 1080p 60 frames a second stream at 12 megabytes per second uh, SRT feed into a YouTube event on your test channel throughout a 12 hour duration, because we want to prove that even if there are disconnects that you're able to reconnect quickly um, and make sure that your device is providing a st stable and reliable stream to YouTube. Um, whilst you're doing this, uh, we ask that you send examples of CPU and GPU usage, whether that's through screenshots or anything you might be able to share so that we can see how the encoding uh, encoding device is performing, uh, especially with the load that you've got on it during that test. And then also share the encoding profile so that we can see exactly the variables that you put in. If applicable, please also share those real examples of real-time feedback if that's within your encoding device. Uh, and then if your encoder is capable, please repeat the steps at 4K. Uh, but once we reach out to you, we'll go through all of this again. This is just to give you an idea here today uh, what we're expecting during that testing. Um, and then finally, uh, as you can see here, I've reiterated the stream ID format, uh, which you can see, and then a single line format. So if anyone wants to test briefly with the likes of OBS or any, any application where you put it within a single line, uh, this is uh, something we have tested and works. Um, but that is the presentation as such. We now move into a live demo uh, in which I shall just come out of full screen mode. You should still be able to see my screen. I'll look to Marcus to see a nod just to make sure changing tab hasn't done anything. Wonderful. So here we are. This is uh, my high vision media gateway. Um, and this is my test channel. So here we have uh, the default stream key already set up. You can see I've already got a stream key for SRT enabled, but for full transparency, we're gonna create a new one. We're gonna call this PlugFest. 
And then within the drop down here, you have SRT. We're going to hit create. And as you can see, the UI has now updated to show uh, the stream key, the passphrase, uh, stream URLs uh, for primary and backup ingests. Um, so let's take this, and sorry, just reading notes off to my side to see if there's any comments that are coming through that I might be able to answer during. Um, but let's take this information, plug it into uh, my High Vision Media Gateway and show you this coming through and show that it's the YouTube you all know and love. So what we're gonna do is, we'll first, we'll take the primary address and I've already got a feed running uh, into this with everybody's uh, favorite Big Buck Bunny. Uh, which is coming from my laptop just off to the side. Uh, and we're going to add a destination. So let's call it YouTube and TS over SRT. We want to change the type to caller because as I mentioned earlier, we are not going to be calling out from YouTube to your encoding device. You will always need to be the caller in the relationship. Uh, we then want to put in the address and we need to remove a few variables from here. So you leave the address as a.srt.youtube.com. The port is 2010. I'm going to set my latency to 400 just to give it enough. Change the encryption to AES128. Get my passphrase and pop that in there. And then take my stream key. And then here I'm going to go enter stream key, go custom. And then if I can remember where the hashtag is on this keyboard, there we go. And uh, exclamation point, colon, colon, U equals your stream key, then comma copy equals zero, then colon encoder equals SRT gate way. There we go. And then apply and save. And now we're gonna hit apply and close and that should automatically start the route and what we'll do is we'll pop back over to youtube here um but there we go uh big buck money coming through as you can see this is the youtube live control room setup so you can obviously still see uh, we've selected this stream key you still see analytics and you still get the excellent connection status uh, as you expect and then within stream health you can see our little prompts that will tell you when something isn't going right um and otherwise you should just see stream health is excellent um perfect well i'm glad we got there in the end uh apologies for the delay but that is the end of my section today um please do uh fill in the form so go through create a channel uh enable live streaming and then get that uh, the channel id put it through in the form and then one of the live solutions consultants here at youtube will reach out to you uh probably myself uh start sort of replying because i'm very excited to start testing all of your encoding devices with you uh as soon as possible really so please feel free to and uh, just stop sharing my screen or is that now frozen as well i've i've apparently broken this computer apologies um but I will be in touch as soon as possible. So please fill in the form and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much for the demo and for uh, the presentation today and being here. And of course, thank you to you guys and YouTube for this uh, amazing this amazing development where we're now working together to create some very exciting uh, opportunities to test with this you know, large ecosystem of people who will be hopefully providing SRT streams to YouTube. Um, so uh, I'd like to welcome our next participant, which is uh, Eustace. So Eustace, are you here? Yes, hello. Hi, Marcus. Hi, everyone. Eustace, thank you. It's nice to be back together with you in another PlugFest. It's been a while. So uh, Eustace Rogman, who's joining us from Germany, I'll let you do an introduction and then you can carry through to uh, the end of today's webinar, going through the logistics and other important considerations for everybody to understand in terms of their participation in the next few days of the PlugFest. So thank you, Eustace, and welcome. You know what? It's so hard after that demo, you know, to okay. resist and do this uh, webinar right now and not jump on, you know, <laughs> the encoder and try it myself. Uh, but yeah, first things first, um, welcome everyone uh, um, to the PluckFest. So uh, yeah, most of you uh, may already know me as one of the first contact points to SRT when you reach out um, to High Vision or the uh, um, SRT uh, Alliance or just on the uh, open source uh, space in GitHub or in Slack. And uh, I'm an SRT solutions architect. I'm somewhat a bridge between 
uh, uh, SRT users, uh, other developers, and um, the core SRT developers at High Vision. And one of my um, great pleasures is uh, to host the SRT Plugfest um, from now and then. And um, it's um, a virtual event where um, we want to find out or give you the opportunity to find out if your SRT implementation works uh, with other vendors. And um, it mostly takes part in um, a chat, um, which is based on Slack. And uh, on the left side, you can see the um, Slack AdWords, which is uh, srtalliance.slack.com. Um, just pick any browser, um, go there. If needed, uh, create a, a Slack account, it's uh, free. Um, and uh, join the channel Interop um, to join the Plugfest. Um, there you will find uh, yeah, most of the attendees of the, this uh, webinar as well as uh, other people uh, who are eager to test um, your streams as well offering uh, um, their streams to be tested by others. And um, that's where all of the uh, communication uh, will uh, take place where you could uh, um, uh, grab people. And so uh, during the event, you should uh, have some presence in the Slack channel uh, from time to time at least to check if there were maybe uh, questions uh, for one of your streams or one of uh, your devices. Um, last but not least, uh, let's uh, share the results of your testing and uh, we will have an Excel sheet for that, which uh, I will come to in a minute. Next slide, please. Yeah. So um, a few things um, to keep in mind. First of all, SRT is content agnostic, right? And we are here to mainly test SRT connections. So if a video doesn't, play, it doesn't necessarily mean SRT failed, right? It could still be a codec incompatibility between H.264 and HEVC or uh, AA3 versus uh, AC3 audio um, or whatever uh, codec incompatibilities you might have. So that's um, why we all should mutually agree on some basic codec uh, standards, um, which means, you know, not try the extreme limits, right? Just use common encoder settings. Uh, you're absolutely free to go down to detail in particular test if you want, but if you offer streams for the majority, um, keep it uh, common and, and simple. Um, if you have uh, bandwidth problems, uh, we can also uh, multiply um, your stream by adding additional SRT gateways or hub routes. Um, so that more people could connect. However, we are also encourage you to have um, direct device to device um, tests as much as possible, right? Because um, additional device in the middle will, uh, yeah, not reflect a, a direct one-on-one -on -one result. And uh, as your time allows, uh, please test as much <laughs> streams which are, are available as possible, right? So that we all get a, a big picture of, um, you know, how SRT works outside in the real world in different devices, software solutions, uh, CDNs, you name it, right? Everything. Yeah, and don't forget to share the results and collect the statistics. Uh, in case something goes wrong, right? Um, try um, to, first of all, if you can't uh, connect, maybe just try again later. It might be that the service is blocked by another test. Um, in the Excel sheet, we also have a small drop down menu where somebody could indicate that, you know, I'm, I'm blocking this service now or the service is blocked by a user. Um, please remember to unblock it after your test, right? Um, but if you cannot get things going, um, feel free um, to either reach out uh, to myself uh, using the tag at jwalkman or um, um, reach out in the Slack channel. Um, we ask everyone to uh, leave the contact details as used in the Slack channel uh, with the sources so that you, know, you could look up the person administrating that particular service and contact him directly. And uh, yeah, from there, uh, we can all start to look uh, what's failing, right? And uh, 
try other things or even uh, troubleshoot further down. Um, if your solution doesn't provide uh, statistics um, to monitor, um, you know, I'm here to help as well. We can, you know, have uh, um, additional endpoints such as uh, uh, SRTX transmit or high vision SRT gateways or other products you know, which can uh, lock SRT statistics, uh, maybe display them in a graph um, or write them to a file for further analysis. Uh, furthermore, um, I can give you guidance on how to um, perform a network packet capture so that we can yeah, really uh, capture a copy of that SRT stream, uh, which then can be useful for further analysis by um, developers um, or you know, other involved people. Um, Please also keep in mind that the uh, PlugFest is an international event and we cover a lot of time zones from all the Far East in Japan, all the way West um, to uh, US West Coast, maybe Hawaii, I don't know. <laughs> so we will see, but uh, uh, so please uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, people uh, might uh, not work, might or actually sleeping and um, uh, try again later. Or uh, if you um, agree on or, uh, dates, right, um, maybe use uh, UTC timestamps or indicate which time, you, time zone you are in and maybe ask uh, what time your uh, um, uh, partner is in, right, to, to yeah, find a, a good spot. Next slide, please. Yeah, as I said, all results uh, will be shared in an uh, Excel sheet and the uh, request can be accessed uh, um, or asked for in this Slack channel. I unfortunately need to do that on an individual uh, per user basis. Um, uh, at least um, the link now works for everyone. So I figured that out that, you know, we have one common link for the um, Excel sheet, but if you want to add stuff, you need a write access, right? And therefore I need to uh, add you to the editor's list. Um, once uh, you have access, uh, you can start offering your own streams to be tested uh, by creating uh, your own row um, in the spreadsheet. And um, uh, if you um, just test the available uh, streams, you uh, pick your own column towards the right side for your results, which I will explain in a bit more detail just in a second, right? Again, if video doesn't play, don't panic, right? Check the codec settings, um, get in contact uh, with the other end and uh, maybe figure out if it's a codec incompatibility, right? Uh, the main goal here really is to check uh, SRT data transfer and the stability and compatibility of the different solutions using SRT to connect to each other. Um, if you need help, uh, reach out in um, the channel interop. Um, many of the participants have joined uh, multiple PlugFest already, right, and are very helpful uh, and will assist you, right? Don't hesitate to ask. And uh, please keep in mind, there are no stupid questions, right? Um, whatever you don't understand or, you know, having difficulties to understand, just ask, uh, we are here to help. And it's such a great community. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm even looking forward to that. I will learn a lot of things myself in this event um, too. So yeah, excellent, please. So um, here's a screenshot of that. Um, Excel sheet, many of you know it uh, already. Uh, if you are not uh, familiar with it yet, uh, once you have access, um, take a minute to, you know, just um, have an overview um, so that you will um, see the characteristics, um, how people enter stuff, right, how people check stuff. And um, so you can uh, start following analog to the already existing examples. Um, if you offer a stream, just uh, choose a horizontal row, enter the details of your stream, right? Make sure the contact email matches the email you use in the um, Slack channel, right? So that people can contact you directly. Next slide, please. If you are in to uh, test SRT available streams, um, 
you know, just uh, pick a line, um, look up the address and maybe some additional settings such as encryption, the encryption key, maybe stream ID set, right? Um, um, test it and um, if you have a, a positive result, um, choose your own column, mark the first line in that column, you know, with, with the name of your product to also occupy that column for you, right? And then uh, fill in the um, uh, uh, white uh, um, field in the matrix of the device which you have tested successfully, hopefully, right? Um, if the test was successful, uh, mark it green. Um, if it was successful from an SRT perspective, but maybe had some codec issues or um, other issues preventing the playback of the stream, uh, mark it yellow. And if it completely failed um, on an SRT uh, um, point of view, um, mark it red, right? And yeah, again, reach out if you experience problems, uh, we will find out what's going on together. Um, as I said earlier, please remind some devices only support a single connection at a time, which is valid mostly for um, ingest point where you stream to, right? Because like, yeah, you <laughs> can only receive one stream on a port or you have a stream ID enabled, that might be different then, right? But also for um, uh, outgoing video, um, some of uh, uh, the products um, are restricted, right? And somebody else might already just uh, be using the same source um, and maybe just try again later or get in contact uh, with somebody to um, yeah, either find a time spot, maybe have an agreement on a secret non-public port <laughs> to test. <laughs> so uh, I I've seen a, a lot of workarounds here and uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we will uh, or you will come together with the uh, people of your choice, right? It, it will work out. We have till Friday after afternoon yeah, or evening. Um, one more addition to the um, PlugFest uh, workflows is that we are um, uh, trying to do a little um, survey on the SRT features uh, supported by uh, different uh, vendors, right? And therefore, um, there's an additional uh, tab uh, on the Excel sheet uh, called device details. Uh, feel free to um, go there and just leave you know, some details uh, of your product, maybe your product name, vendor name, uh, what's the product version, what SRT version you use and which SRT features uh, are supported, you know, just like cordless rendezvous, AES encryption, stream ID, right, uh, uh, connection bonding, whatever, right? So that we also get an overview of uh, how SRT is being used out in the field. Uh, and yeah, uh, what features are maybe not used at all, or you know, just to get an overview on that. That might be really helpful. And yeah, please take some time to to add um, some of uh, um, the information here. Um, to stay updated, um, even outside of the SRT Slack channel, um, check the SRT Alliance uh, website. Um, I posted um, best practice um, um, how to guide uh, there, which uh, contains all of the information from uh, this uh, slide deck here. And uh, uh, yeah, some how to's on how to get started, how to publish a source, how to test other sources, um, some recommendations on the video re resolution. And it also contains um, the uh, information that uh, Callum gave us earlier on the uh, YouTube testing, right? So if you're interested in that, um, yeah, just also check the SRTalliance.org uh, page and, and you will find the um, SRT PlugFest 2023 article there and uh, the how to guide. Um, yeah, and last but not least, the uh, final results, the wrap up of the event uh, will also be um, post it there. So uh, if you only can receive streams, uh, right, we're here to help. We have a lot of um, encoders, um, gateways, or um, yeah, stream software solutions like StreamHub uh, um, available and can send you streams. But uh, I'm uh, 
pretty sure that there are many other people out there eager to send you your uh, their SRT streams as well, right? So will be a, a nice event, and let's see if we can uh, top the number of individual device to device tests in uh, this year's uh, Plugfest. Um, what was the number? I think it's three and a half thousand or something like that, right? So it's uh, <laughs> will be a lot of work to. Um, to beat that, but I'm I'm pretty sure we will. So, and uh, from here, it's uh, time to kick off the uh, SRT Plugfest 2023, starting in two, one, and now. <laughs> so uh, let's go see you all in the Slack channel, um, and uh, let's have a great party. Maybe in the end, uh, we can do some special event again. For example, the uh, longest SRT chain the world has ever seen, right? If your solution supports input and output, right? If, if we have finished all tests, maybe let's go a couple of times around the world and see <laughs> if the stream is still available uh, or whatever crazy idea you come up with in the Plugfest. I'm really, really excited to see you all again. It's been a long time, right? And a uh, lot of things uh, uh, have happened uh, um, in SRT, especially under the hood, right? And uh, I'm yeah, super curious to see uh, your solutions, what kind of workflows you solve, and yeah, and how SRT glues everything together. So. Thank you everyone for joining the webinar and also for now joining the Slack channel. See you there and um, have a great time. Thank you, Eustace. Thank you, everybody. And especially thank uh, Callum Plunkett for joining us today from YouTube. Uh, I'm sure uh, you're back, you're live, your video's working. Thank you very much for being here. It was great having you. And I'm sure uh, you guys are going to be busy for the next few days. So. To everybody, have a great and successful Plugfest. Thank you all very much.